Hello everyone, this is Chris Jamel at Exiton Interactive and in this video we are going to focus on creating our bottom navigation. So in the previous few videos we worked on implementing the main navigation on top here. We have this hamburger menu, it slides out when you click on it, animates out, gives you access to these. Um, there's plenty of debate and argument over you know, using this kind of menu here and I do agree with some of it, right? You know, it hides, you can't even navigate without, if you're on a mobile device, without clicking on this. So, one of the solutions to this is to have sort of a bottom navigation. So, this sort of, uh, well, copy on you, most mobile application or many mobile applications, you open them up, they'll have some kind of navigation on the bottom. And that's what we're going to implement in this video. So, below a certain point, which I've chosen to be 1024 pixels the bottom navigation will display and above that it will disappear and then we'll just have the main navigation across the top. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing that we're going to do is to add the markup to our page. So what we're going to do is come in, create in the pages folder, we'll go to the shared folder. Inside there we're going to create a new file called the bottomnav.cshtml. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we need a nav with a bottom navigation class inside of there, a UL inside of there, an LI, an A. We'll put that root and we'll have an I tag fas.fa-home.fa-2x. So it'll be an icon and inside there we also want some text. Oops, just give me the home. All right. Just cheat a little bit, copy and paste. Let's get a few more so we can see everything going on. Applications, page one. Actually, I probably should have copied and pasted this one, but whatever. Give it a cloud icon. Applications. Articles, page dash one. Call that one newspaper. Articles, last but not least, articles slash series slash page dash one. This will be, what did I say, if a book open series. Quick check real quick, I think everything's good. So let's add this to the pa our pages. We want it on each page, so we'll go to the layout.cshtml file. Just like we have the main nav, they could be put together. Let's just we'll put it down here. So bottom nav, save that. Refresh our page, and we have things going on here, of course, flashing us, telling it. Doesn't know what these icons are. So let's come in here. We've seen this done in previous videos. If we go into the source folder, we have a main.page.ts, which is where we've defined all of our other styles, or I mean uh, icons. So let's keep from doing it again. Blank. It's nice to copy a blank line. So these are the icons that we just specified. We need to add them to our library, of course. So we need the FA book open. FA Cloud, FA Home, and Newspaper. Save that. Give that a refresh, and now we are good to go. We have our icons. And close that. So now we'll do a little bit of styling for this thing. So what we're going to do is come down in here, our source folder again. We have this components. Uh, Create a bottom nav, already drawn it, or folder, and inside of that we need a file bottom nav.component.css. You just copy these things in. 
So just like in the, well, importing the base things I need, functions and such, mix-ins, but then uh, these uh, variables that we've defined here, these are the same thing, same values that we defined in the main navigation. So in the real world example here, I would have copied the, or these uh, variables would live in a variables file and that would get imported into both of the others instead of being defined twice. But we're trying to make this a little bit of standalone. But while we're at it, before I forget here, since we have this file now, what we need to do is to have this included in our page. So the next thing that we're going to do is come down to our main.page.scss file. We're going to come in here and fix a few things here. So we're importing the main nav. Do the same thing here. Components, bottom nav. So we'll import that. What I want, so let's just clean this up a bit. So we're going to remove this stuff. Yep, and I'm going to remove the color just to keep this with what I decided to do in the notes. We're going to include padding, which is then um, it's actually function. So the padding is just for the top, and that's the only thing we want to set. So top only. Now the you know the bottom navigation of course is going to be on the bottom so and we're only going to show it when we need to in case we have a mobile navigation so we'll include media less than because we could go the other way around show it and then hide it but we'll equal opportunity so if we're at 1024 pixels or less Go ahead and add some padding to this thing. Not the top, um, not right. Should turn out to be, we want 79 pixels and not left. Save it. All right, so something. What's going funky here? Body content. Such a little space. Why? Oh, it's just a style of maybe there's some minimal height or something going on. Ignore it. Okay. All right, so we have now the style included into the page. We can close that and we can go back to the bottom nav scss and do some styling here so we have the class bottom navigation first off let's set the position so we'll put it fixed don't do anything with the top left right and bottom to be zero and we moved it down to the bottom right so now just to be sure, we set the background color to navigation background color. Apparently in the notes we do it twice. We'll settle for just once here. So border color. And that's going to be the navigation border color. Border style. Solid. Now we need border width. One pixel to the top, zero, 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 everywhere else. We have our border now. And modify the Z index to be apparently 2000 is where I was. Okay. Don't see any change with that. So let's go with the UL and display flex. Flex direction row. Perfect. I'm going to set a uh, max width on it. So if we don't, you know, everything's just, we're going to set flex on all these icons and then they're just going to expand, 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 and if we're up to a 
1024 pixels, you know, it's 1024 by um, four, so I don't just didn't like the look of it, so we'll set a, a max width for the whole container, the UL. And uh, as include, since we're gonna set the max width, we want to center everything. So we'll set top and bottom margin, we're not gonna do anything with those, but we'll set left and right to auto. And apparently, I've got enough space to do a little centering. All right, so that's the UL. Let's take care of the LI now, or LIs. So you flex one. Perfect. Getting there. I think. Yep. It'll look better once we center everything. There's apparently by default the stuff that I've added in has sets a margin on the paragraph elements, so we'll just eliminate those. And then the last thing we're gonna do is deal with the anchor tags. So we'll put them in display block and uh, so text align center text decoration none save those all right it's looking better already let's add some padding to these six two five em top and bottom zero left and right that's better let's give them a color of navigation anchor color save those all right so we're setting in even better now and it's just about done here the last thing that I would like to do is to give some visual indication of what uh, what you know which ones active where we are if any of them are active they we have pages in here that may not be so if it's active we want to like I said give a visual representation so let's go back to the markup here and go to the top we're going to need some C-sharp code here. Let's specify const string active class. So we'll give this, let's call it active. All right, so we need to set a class for each of our icons or links there, anchors. So we'll have a home, CSS class. Applications, CSS class. One for articles and series. Perfect. All right. So now we'll come down here, give us an if, and we'll say if context dot request dot Pat has value. All right, so we do something here. So we'll say path is equal to context dot request dot path dot value, and then we'll say so if path is equal to the root. Then we'll say home CSS class equals active class just to see if everything is working here. We'll come down here. Class is equal to at home CSS class. Save that markup change so we'll refresh. And see, I don't want to deal with moving that thing around. Let's go back to styling here and inside of our anchor we can say and dot active so background color that's going to be darken and we'll darken the navigation anchor color by say 10 percent color is going to be equal to Let's see what well, I did. Navigation anchor color for it. Let's save that. That. <laughs> I 
might have been what I said in the notes that I did, but doubtful that that is actually the case. Navigation. Well, that surely will break some tests to run if you do some <laughs> contrast test. So let's just make it navigation background color. All right, so now we can see that that's working correctly. Now let's come back in here and see what I decided to do for the others. All right, so I did a strict equality for the root, right? But in the others, what I want is, so in the case for, say for articles, we know we set this article, uh, the anchor, the href for it to be, um, let's do applications, I guess, in this first. So application slash page dash one. So you're gonna set it to be page dash one. That implies that there's different pages. So we certainly don't want to have, uh, you know, equality just on this whole thing here. Also, we have this other instance in which I have, for instance, articles. Articles appears here twice. So it goes articles, page one, article series, page one. Right? So we can't just do articles. So you have to sometimes be a little more careful with it. So all I'm gonna do is do path.contains. So for applications, we're gonna do application slash page and call it a day for the applications. So application CSS class is equal to the active CSS class. Perfect, and why oh, give me a squiggly? It's gone. Instead of writing them out, we'll just copy, right? So articles, page, and the end one there has series page. So that will give me the, the correct one. So now all we have to do is add the classes. At, and this is applications. This is articles. And the last one. Series, of course, refreshing. I could I'm going to take the time to set up blank pages for everything, and uh, so you could just, uh, you know, so instead of saying, oh, we'll take this, move it up here, we'll give this one the root, refresh, and we'll see that everything seems to be working correctly in terms of adding the proper active class to the route. So if we open this thing up all the way, we'll see that 1024, which is <laughs> So somewhere I decided, now that you think back to it, right? I don't remember putting any query in the bottom nav to say, don't show me. So let's come up here and do our that include bottom now. So what we want is uh, media greater than let's see mobile break width and this one should be display none. Back to the page. This is gone now. So thousand. Yeah, don't try and do stuff live here. Ah, here we are. So it's coming back. Interesting. What is our problem? Mobile break width. 1,024 pixels. I made a mistake to find it again somewhere. Thousand 
24. And take it down to 1023. Still nothing. Let me uh, pause here and just figure out what's going on. And I'm back. So it turns out there was a problem, wasn't a problem. So the problem is related to having zoomed in. So I had the browser zoomed in to make it a little bit easier to see in the video. And of course that messed with the breakpoints. So uh, if I zoom everything out, it works correctly. It's 1024, it disappears and works. So less than 1024, it appears again. So now we have our mobile, I mean our bottom navigation menu working correctly for our mobile display. So I think that takes care of it for this video. Hope you enjoy the video as usual. Any comments, questions, suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below or anything you'd like to see. Other than that, uh, again, thank you for watching the video and I'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you, and I will talk to you in the next video.